Good morning, Candy View Vineyard Church. I'm Natasha Saavedra, and this is Sunday service. I just want to welcome you. If you guys are new, we are so very happy to have you. And something that is exciting is we've started our online live stream. So those of you who are online, we see you. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment of where you're tuning in from and how God is blessing you this week, we'd love to hear that. So I'm going to ask you guys to stand up. And as you stand up, I want you to leave all the other stuff at your seat. And as you rise, let's be ready to just engage and commune with the Lord. So let us worship. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a good morning. If you're not, there's a reason why we're all here today. We've been brought here today. The Lord has prompted us to be here today. Some of you may feel like that's not the case. But we know he's always walking with us. So, Father, we just lift up right now. We just give everything over to you right now, all of our concerns all of our troubles, everything that's going on in our life, the joys that we have, we're just giving it all. Father, we're just going to praise you. We're going to raise glorious praise to you for your never-ending promises, God. Holy Spirit, come in the name of Jesus, inhabit this place. Inhabit us. We surrender our hearts as we raise a hallelujah, Father. Sing with me. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah my way is a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me
church will stand and sing endless praise to Christ our King and on that day of victory we will see your glory and as your church will stand and sing endless praise Father, you never leave or forsake us through the power of your Son, his life, death, and resurrection. For that we are eternally grateful. We lift up praise. Sing with me. And on the day of victory, we will see your glory and as your church will stand and sing endless praise to Christ our King Yahweh our Father Yahweh our friend Yahweh our beloved Yahweh Always, Yahweh, always, Yahweh,
been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been
can do. I just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I'll open up my heart to you. It's all about him, we sing. But I'm sorry when I've come with my intended. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Fix our eyes on you. I'm caught up in your presence. Oh, I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this only moment. And I never want to leave. No. For the lessons, cause Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. We sing to Him this morning. Nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else. Nothing else, oh, nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else. Nothing can take your place, God. Nothing matches what you offer me. This moment is what we were made for. For communion with you, for relationship with you. It exceeds anything this world can offer. Blessings because you're the blessing. We're not 
here for anything else because you are everything. Let us be caught up in your presence. Let us be caught up in who you are. Let us be caught up that you are all sufficient, all we need. I just want nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. I just So it's all about you this morning, God. We fix our eyes on you. Lord, speak to us, lead us, fill us this morning to be your hands and feet, to be a light in a world that desperately needs you. We need you, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. We're so glad you guys came to hang out with us, seeing some, some familiar faces. Hope you guys had a great Easter weekend last week. Go ahead and say hello to somebody next to you today and find a seat. trying to get me to dance. That's just not going to happen. I can't help myself. <laughs> hey, I'm Seth Cooley. I'm the family pastor here, and you guys have met my friend Natasha. Uh, it's so morning. good to see you, and some of you I've never seen before because you're new here, and I have an uh, invitation for you. If this is your first time with us, or maybe last weekend was your first time with us, um, we've got a welcome desk out in the atrium as you first walk in. And there's a gift waiting there for you if you just started attending with us in the last couple of weeks. So you should go out there and meet the lovely people that are waiting for you at the end of service. And we would love to connect with you. And man, Easter was just amazing, wasn't it? Was Easter service not totally epic? Full of energy and so much fun. That is like the most fun I've had in almost 20 years. Just like, woo! In four services, we had over 1,800 attendees. Yes, and it's something so wonderful to celebrate. And also online, we've had hundreds of visitors as well. So I just want to... Um, you know, encourage you guys to share that service with your friends and family online. And I want to give a big thank you to all of the staff and the volunteers and the youth who I know some parents, like one over here, had to get up very, very early and our kids were here during all of those services. So thank you guys. Give them a big round of applause. So something you really need to know about about this online service is that if you watched one of our Easter online services, you might not know, but we've got a couple of options. And I want to tell you about it because these are things you can participate in, even though it's after the fact. We have our live service from last weekend available. We also have a pre-recorded service that was just really well done. And um, if you haven't checked out either of those or, or both of those, make sure and go back and, and you can find those on our website or uh, on the YouTube page. But more importantly, you know people in your life that would really benefit from sharing um, either of those services with them and just invite them to, you know, kind of uh, communicate with you about what they thought about the service. So we want you to check that out.
in addition to the hundreds that were attending, we had several hundred who responded uh, in, in either a first-time commitment or a recommitment to Christ, and that was followed by 26 baptisms on Wednesday night. <laughs> We have just a few amazing pictures from our Wednesday night uh, worship service and baptism. And some of you texted Jesus to um, the, the phone number that was online. And we just are excited for you because that has begun just a process of connecting with you and letting you know what the next steps are. And so I just want to welcome you into that. And uh, if, if you haven't done that and you're interested in doing that, you can check that out online also. Uh, something that's really fun that's coming up, if you live in the Riverside area or you know somebody who lives in the Riverside Park area, we are doing Tent Revival, and that is going to be April 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Yes, let's celebrate that. So if you know somebody who lives in that area, please invite them. If you want to volunteer to help, you can go to CanyonViewChurch.com or you can get in touch with Landon Miracle. We're so excited about what God has coming for this valley. And, you know, uh, what we felt last week is just the beginning. It's just the first fruits. And you all know this, but because God has blessed each one of us individually, uh, one of the ways that he really uh, pulls out of what he's wanting to do in our valley is through our giving. And so, uh, as you can see on the screen, there's multiple ways to give. Um, thank you so much for not just giving with your finances, but those of you who uh, are serving amongst us, who get involved with the food outreach that we did last week and the ones that we do monthly. Um, there's so many ways to give. And if you want to find a way to belong at Canyon View, giving from what God's blessed you with, th that is such a great way to connect with not just Canyon View, but more importantly, what God is doing in uh, kingdom work here in Grand Junction. So would you guys pray with me over today's offering? Lord, we're just so grateful for all that we see that you're doing. And Lord, we're thankful for your presence and that you meet each one of us here today. Uh, we pray a, a blessing over all the gifts that are given today. We pr uh, pray that your spirit would speak through Corey. And uh, thank you for all that are attending uh, both in person and online. And Lord, we're, we just ask for uh, your blessing on this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, check out the screens. He's been called a good teacher, a rabbi, a prophet, a man of God. We think we know who Jesus is. So who is this Jesus? This may surprise you. Hi, guys. Happy Easter. Well, I mean, he's still risen. Right? Right? And so uh, we just love throwing out t-shirts. So who wants a t-shirt this morning? Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, before, you got to participate this time. <laughs> okay, I see it. Yeah. We're going to talk today a little bit about um, how Jesus is inviting us into a completely different worldview. Okay, now we're going to explain that a little bit. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Jesus, uh, for like 100, 150 people or so said yes to Jesus last weekend, and then the baptisms and stuff like that, which is just crazy. It's so fun. And he's just not inviting people into like, okay, now let's wait for the world to end and heaven to come. Let's just suck it up and get through it. He's actually, Jesus in one place is called the new and living way. <laughs> and so he's actually inviting all of us into a paradigm shift. And so I'm going to teach about that today. So what is one thing, you're going to have to say it out loud in front of people and then I'll throw you a teacher. What's one thing that could create a worldview that we might have? For example, one thing might be where you grew up. You grew up in a small town, creates a worldview. What's the worldview is a way in which you see the world, the lenses that you see everything. So for a free t-shirt, what's another way, there's hundreds of them, that create, what'd you say? Different relationships you have in your life. Okay. Yeah. It went right between your heads to Riley. That was lucky. I mean, honestly, that's the best throw I've had in 51 years, so... And then how about over here, one other thing that creates a worldview. What's that? Oh, John said politics. I didn't. Here we go. There we go. Good job, buddy. And so 
Um, let's go into that here about worldview. And, and if you're new and joining us for the first time, I just met a couple that haven't uh, had a chance to come to church because of COVID in a year, and it's their first time back. And uh, there's stories like that. We just welcome you. We just welcome you. My name is Corey, and a lot of the guys are out at Church in the Dirt. There's about 100 guys out uh, having church in the middle of nowhere, playing in the dirt and uh, doing things, and so that's where they are. So just so thankful. Thank you for inviting people to Easter. Easter uh, weekend was really beautiful. Uh, there's over 4,000 views now online with the service, and for those of you watching online, we love you guys. We're glad you're with us. So let's go ahead and pray, and just prepare your heart. Because this is one of those talks that's very challenging. It's inviting, but it's super challenging. Challenging for my heart anyway. So Holy Spirit, come. And would you help us absorb your word and the good things that you have for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. So worldview, we're going to look at how Jesus shocks people. One of the ways he shocks people is a whole different worldview. The definition of worldview could be something like a particular philosophy or life or concept that the world that informs how you live, how you operate, how you see things, how you vote, how you do everything, right? And there's been different worldviews throughout the different centuries. There's uh, one guy, he was a flatlander. You guys know what a flatlander is? They believe the world's flat. And so he had a worldview that the world was flat. And he, he set out on an epic journey, determined, right? Well, eventually he came around. Ah, uh, church joke. They're always like, wah, wah. So how, how, what shapes our worldview and how we see things? It could be where you grew up. How many people grew up in a town less than 50,000 people? Yeah, lots of folks. How about a town less than 500? God bless you. That's the closer to kind of how I grew up. And it might even be your worldview might be connected by your family of origin, if you served in the military. In fact, who here has served in the military? We just want to right now say thank you. Thank you for your service. You could be uh, any pain or trauma. How many people have in some way, shape, or form gone through pain or trauma in their life? And that actually shapes how you see things. The country you grew up in. How many people grew up here in the United States? How many people grew up in a different country? Joel grew up where? In Africa. That's a continent. It's Guinea. <laughs> like I'm telling you that, sorry. Oh, gosh. Political affiliations. How about, do you think news or social media impacts your worldview? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, your neighbors. Do your neighbors impact your worldview? How about books you read? Oh, my gosh. Lots of them, right? Well, here's the deal. For those of us who choose not to follow the worldview that the Bible puts together and specifically through Jesus himself, what we see over the course of history is that it brings some things. So an, a worldview that's not of Jesus brings pain eventually. It leads to death eventually. But it brings suffering. It brings lots of war. Lots of war. It brings lots of violence. Leads to things like human trafficking. So I think it's possible that all of us potentially have had the worldview we're supposed to have get hijacked. So I just want you to sit on that for a second. Is it possible that our worldview that we're supposed to have as humans has been completely hijacked? I think it's possible. I think it's possible. And so that's kind of what I want to explore. And even the writer of Ecclesiastes, it's a book in the Old Testament, and his name is Solomon. And he had the most wisdom and the most money of anybody on the planet. So he got all the money and he got all the wisdom, and he decided, I'm going to try everything in life to find happiness. And he did. He went into the journey of exploring everything. I mean, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. He was looking for it, man. What is going to satisfy me? 
And in the end, at the very end of Ecclesiastes, it says, you know what? I found that all of that led to absolutely nothing. And then he said something interesting. It's like I'm just chasing the wind. You guys, we got to stop chasing the wind. So much of my life I've wasted chasing the wind, especially in my early 20s. And so many people who say, identify, or check the box in a little voting form that you're a Christian actually are still chasing the wind, and they don't know the radical, beautiful love of Jesus in that his worldview. But it's super challenging, and it's going to be very offensive to many to understand this shocking Jesus. So it's interesting. Even uh, there's a fascinating story. Look at this quote from um, Yun Mai Park. It's not easy to give up a worldview that is built into your bones and imprinted on your brain like the sound of your own father's voice. Yan Mi was from North Korea and she escaped and in her escape she got sold into human trafficking. And even at one point soldiers were about to rape her and her mom said, no, rape me first. Trying to stop. And she's had a horrific life. Korean and Chinese missionaries helped rescue her, and she's been speaking around the world now against human trafficking and oppression, and she comes from a place that created a worldview in her brain, and she had to disconnect from the falsehood into the truth, and even at church, sometimes we need to do that because I know I've needed to do that. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, so here's where we get interesting. Are you guys ready to get interesting? Go like this. Ha, 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 ha. All right. Church should be fun, by the way. And we should interact. Because we're a learning. Oh, yeah, I forgot to do something. We're a learning community. We're, we, we keep learning together no matter what age we are. And so we've, we're starting something now to get even more serious about that. Anthony, go back to that questions. Um, oh, there. <laughs> we're good, dude. Everyone has questions. So now another thing we are, are doing here at the church is this number, 970-432-7992. Take a picture of it or type it in or leave it on screen for a bit. You just type the word question to that number, text it. You're going to get a response right back. What's your question? And any question you have about faith, about Jesus, about Old Testament, New Testament, about why the Broncos aren't winning more, uh, any question you have, we're going to be a learning environment together. You're not going to get an answer right back. It's going to go into a pool of questions that we'll eventually kind of work with. It'll help form sermon series. And together we're going to keep learning. Sometimes it'll be live to my phone. And you'll be able to text me during the message a question. And we'll be able to answer it in the moment if possible. So we want to learn. We want to explore. This journey is vibrant. Can I get an amen? So type any question to that number. And we'll give $1 to the dumbest question. Okay. This, that was dangerous. <laughs> Let's go to Scripture. Enough, uh, enough me talking. Scripture is the most important. So look at this now in the context of worldview. This is one of my favorite verses. It's uh, Mark 1.15. You've heard it before. The time is fulfilled. Jesus is saying, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Everybody say kingdom. <laughs> Repent and believe in the gospel. You've heard this before. Jesus is saying, the kingdom of God has come now. There is a new worldview, and we need to repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus is talking about here the gospel of what? In this case, this good news is that the kingdom has come. That's the good news here Jesus is talking about, right? Now, we get this word repent. Let's go to the next screen. Most people think repent is, I'm going to repent, and I'm going to be convicted of sin and feel bad, and, uh, uh, and I'm going to be, uh, feel sorry. I'm going to confess it, and then I'm going to turn around. That's the Greek word metaneo. Turn around and do something different. That's normally what repent means in the Bible. Bible, lots of places. It's kind of this. Now, the second time, or in this case, when Jesus says repent, it's different. It's only two places. I've referenced that before, but I want to unpack this. The Greek word is metaneoite. Everybody say ite. It's a little variation from the written word hand of Paul the Apostle of what this word means. The word means to see things differently and change your view. You've realized that you've had the wrong worldview, Jesus is saying. What I want you to do is I want you to feel that problem, and I want you now to see the world differently. That's very different than just, I feel guilty and I'm going to change my ways. Jesus is saying, hey, the kingdom of God has come. Now, everything you once thought, your worldview 
is now different. There's a different way to operate. I want you to repent. I want you to see a new worldview and believe it. All right? And it's fascinating. Now, this is very interesting. Matthew 6, 33, you've heard this before. It says, now, this is how important it is. Seek first what? The kingdom of God and its righteousness and all things will be given to you and added to you. So there's this whole thing Jesus keeps, te- keeps talking about. He's always talking about the kingdom. And you might be saying, Corey, you're always talking about the kingdom. That's because Jesus is always talking about the kingdom. And so what's fascinating, it's super, super hard for us. Because who was born or grew up in the United States? Most of us, probably. I love the United States. Every time I travel, I love when the wheels hit the ground back in the USA. I love it. There's fast food and (laughs) stuff like that. So what's interesting, though, is we have a worldview here in the United States even that gets into what John is talking about politically. Like our country was founded on getting and escaping from a monarchy, Great Britain. We, we wanted to have independence, which is beautiful and good. We wanted to uh, be divided from Great Britain. And so it's fun when I talk about this, I ask people who are different political leaders who have influence, I said, what's the best form of government? And it's usually like, oh, a republic or a democracy. And no, it's not. I mean, those are good. And they mitigate sin well. But the best form of government is a monarchy. And people are like, ah! <laughs> what? What are you talking? Like right now, some of you are looking at me like, do you know that you can form daggers in your eyes? I just wanted you to know that. Um, and so why am I saying that? Well, a monarchy is the best form of government if the king is sinless. If you can have a sinless king that operates the monarchy in a way that's familial or family-based, that's the best form and perfect form. Now, the problem is you can never have that on earth unless it's Jesus, God, king. And so the worldview of being in the kingdom is that we have a king, which is very foreign for us. In fact, there's something in our DNA that's like, no, we're not supposed to be into monarchies. Now, here's what I'm not saying for clarity. I love our form of government. I think it works. I love the United States. But Jesus is my king. Right? And so that's a worldview kind of challenge that we have. It's fascinating. And so let's continue. In uh, Luke 12, it says, For all the nations of the world seek after all sorts of things, but your Father knows you need them. Instead, what does it say? Seek the kingdom, and these things will be added to you. In verse 32, see, some people say, Well, it's hard to find the kingdom. Oh, gosh, I don't know if I can do it. Guys, look what, look what he says. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you something. What does he want to give you? The kingdom. Oh, no, no, no. It's more than that now. Because we've repented, Jesus says, it's the father's good pleasure to give you a new worldview. He wants to give that to us. Isn't that awesome? But it get, it's difficult, <laughs> so let's keep going. Let me show you some more proof. Jesus says in this incredible conversation with Pilate, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of the, okay, so if I had a worldview that was of this, my servants would come and they'd fight and they'd take over and we'd just take care of things. We would just go to war that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom's not of this world. Then Pilate says, so you're a king? Jesus said, You say that I am a king. I love that. That's what you say. So for this purpose, I was born. And for this purpose, I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my... Back, 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 back the truck up. One more. Anthony, there we go. Everyone who uh, uh, is of the truth listens to my voice. So this is this discipleship journey we're all on. How do we listen to the words of Jesus to help make us and help us uh, and be invited into a new worldview. All right, that's the journey. Let's keep going. Pilate said to him, what is the truth? After he had said this, he went back outside of the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. What is the truth? This is such a classic question, right? What is the truth? Here's three questions that we all ask. Hang with me. What is the truth in this life? Like, what's your point of origin for truth? Is it what your mom and dad taught you? Is it your moral compass inside of you? Is it the philosophers of the Enlightenment period? Is it the Bible? 
what's your origin of truth? So it's really a good question. A lot of people say the Bible. I would say that's close. What is a meaningful life? Like, what is life? Like, what is it all about? Right? We ask these big questions. The next question, now how do I live that out? What is truth? What is life? And what is the way? What is truth? What is life? And what is the way? Some of you are chuckling. You're like, you know where I'm going. So John 14, 6 says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What is this life all about? You guys say the answer. Well, what, what is the meaning of life? Well, okay then. What's the way in which we live? Okay. So when we have Jesus period on the wall out there, when you came in, that team worked really hard to get that done for Easter for you. And we have these shirts. It's not about the shirt. Sometimes I, I hate bumper stickers and shirts because people think they can wear them. And then it's like, yeah, I'm good. Now, just this represents something deep in our heart. We are radically, as a church, in great love, going after, in a new and fresh way, the teachings of Jesus that will give us a whole new worldview, that will cause a revolution of love in Mesa County and beyond, and that the kingdom will be expressed. If you're wondering what we're up to, that's where you're up to. In 10 minutes from now, I'm going to ask you to surrender your life and worldview to a new worldview. I'm going to ask, if possible, you feel you need to repent for taking on other worldviews and just say, I'm sorry, God, I repent, and now I want the worldview of Jesus. In 10 minutes, I'm just going to straight up, can we do that? And I do it out of humility because I've been so jacked up. My worldview when I was young was, uh, uh, what was it again? A, a Beamer by 25, a Mercedes by 35, and a Jag by 45. That, that was my straight up goals of my worldview. House on the golf course, like straight up materialist. Those things aren't bad. If you have those things, they're not bad. Just that those were driving me. I just wanted money and wanted more money. When I wasn't getting enough, I turned to illegal gambling. Just wanted it. My worldview was jacked up. Anybody else? And so let's play around a little bit now to give you a shocking Jesus. So if we go to different issues of life, this is a setup, this talk. For next week, we're going to talk about what does success look like from Jesus. The week after that, what's the shocking information about leadership Jesus has for us. So this is kind of a setup today. Jesus shocks the world with a whole new way of looking at everything. And so what I did is I just took a couple things to kind of remind you. With wealth, everybody thought was wealth, you get it, you save it back then so your generations have money. Good thing. But Jesus shows up and says, you know what, instead of receive, it's actually better to give it away. If you really want to have wealth, you're going to serve the poor, and you're going to be very generous, and you're going to lay up, he says, treasures in heaven. He flips it. And to many people at the time, that was very shocking. Religion, oh my gosh, this could be like, we could talk 10 years about this. The whole religious system was about sacrifice and guilt and, and doing the right things to earn favor with God. And Jesus just like shocks them and flips it. Say, it's not about that. I took the final sacrifice. I was the Lamb of God. And actually, it's all about me. And if you follow me, you have life. He shocks them. Scripture, ah! Do you know what he does with Scripture? He tells people Scripture's got it wrong in one way. He says this, you have said, you have heard it said, but I say, you've heard it said an eye for an eye, but I say, turn the other cheek, let him hit that one too. What? He's now, he's now telling the people of the time that violence back doesn't help change culture. He's saying that gentleness and peace changes culture. Shocking. And for some of you hearing this right now, you're like, wait, what? What? Now, I'm not, don't, don't listen to anything I'm not saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying. And then, and then let, let questions come up and process with God. It's between you and God. G in, in scripture is so powerful because Jesus himself, you know, when people say, what's the word of God? What's the word of God? And people say, hold up the Bible. The Bible's the word of God. The Bible's not the word of God. In the Bible, in John and Revelation, it says the word of God is a nickname for Jesus. And he refers to scriptures. Like, what? 
<laughs> it's crazy. Emotions or sin or spiritual war, spiritual warfare. They used to do these super long exorcisms back in the day, and sometimes demonic uh, spirits would come out of people, and sometimes they wouldn't, right? So the demonic spirits, the realm of evil is a real thing, and all of that was Jesus had about seven encounters with demons in the Old New Testament. The disciples had encounters with demons, and it's just part of this kingdom clash, right? And so Jesus shows up, and in one word, he says, get out. And a demon flees. And all of the people were shocked. In fact, one city was so shocked they couldn't comprehend just Jesus, just this much authority. They said, Jesus, get away from us. Leave us. Don't stay here. Why? Because they were a culture that believed God was God, but very distant and didn't interact in humanity. And Jesus shows up with authority and says to a demon, I want all of you, all legion, a thousand of you, get out, go to those pigs right now. And they're like freaking out. They're so shocked at this Jesus. Now, this happened on Wednesday, guys. We had a person come out of the tub. I'm not going to give any details, so out of protection for a person's confidentiality. Out of the tub of baptism, and an evil spirit then manifested. The person fell to the floor, and there was uh, sounds coming that was strange for many, and it was an evil spirit. It was wonderfully bizarre. I've never had a moment, because the beach balls came back out during baptism, <laughs> and so... We were, some people were praying for the demon to come out. They were worshiping fun music, and beach balls were jumping all over. <laughs> and I'm like, beach balls and Beelzebub, all right. <laughs> so I've never had that happen before. And uh, after some time, just so you know, that person was, uh, he uh, vomited and some other things, and the person was set free, an evil spirit left him. So right now, for some of you, you might be like, whoa, 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 this is a different worldview. I didn't think that stuff happened, and what are you talking about? And is this one of those weird churches? Yes. Um, <laughs> but we only go, we, we don't go any farther than the Bible. Just so you know. And you could keep going. Family, oh, this is going to mess with you. Je <laughs> Jesus totally blows up the idea of the nuclear family. And you're like, wait, what? He honors mothers and fathers, and he's obviously love your kids, and the family is beautiful. But at one particular point, his mom was looking for him, and he tells the people, hey, you know what? Actually, my family isn't just them. My family is everybody who does the will of the Father, who's brothers and sisters in Christ. So he expands family to be everybody who believes, brothers and sisters. It's crazy, the body of Christ. Justice. He goes from retributive to restorative. That justice, violence, food. Oh my goodness. It used to be illegal for certain followers of God to eat certain foods. Jesus shows up, changes the worldview, and said, you know what? Bacon is pretty good. You know? <laughs> if you don't think that shocked people, it was crazy. Uh, medicine. Through healing, and then, of course, I mean, I just could go on and on and on about this Jesus. So, love. You see, the world had never seen or heard of a king who would come off the throne, wash feet, live a perfect life, and be willing to take all of the punishment, all of the sacrifice, for everybody in the whole kingdom so that they could live a free life and willing to die. This was so foreign. In fact, they didn't get it. That's why the resurrection is such a big deal. They're like, wait, what? Whoa. Church family, there's a different way to live. There's a different worldview that Jesus invites us into. And it takes time and it's a journey through all his teachings. I want to invite you, especially this week, if you don't know where to turn next, read John 14, 15, 16, 17. John 14, 15, 16, 17. Read that, get Jesus' heart. Then go back and read Matthew 6 and 7. And that's where he tells you how to live, how to forgive. There's a different way to live. I think we've been hijacked. And I think that we can surrender our worldview that we currently have and start diving into what does Jesus say our worldview should be. And for many of us, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really mess with you.
over the next couple months, it's going to be very difficult because it's challenging, right? It used to be that, like, adultery, like actually having sex with someone you're not married to was considered a sin. See, Jesus doesn't just make it better. He also makes it tough. Jesus shows up and says, you know what? Guys, if you just look at a girl with lust, that's adultery. <laughs> Come on, Jesus, I thought you were like, good, and you loved us. Like, why are you making it harder? Because he loves us and wants us to know about sin, confess it, and be completely free from it. So the last question before we're done is, um, honestly, is Jesus, is he qualified to give us the worldview that we will base all of the truth in our life on. For Jesus to be the origin. See, the Bible is not the origin of truth. Jesus is the origin of truth. And we find out in the Bible what he tells us and how he tells us to live. See the difference? And so, so what makes him qualified to be willing to give up what we thought was right and go with what he says? And you find it in Colossians. And I just want to read it to you to close. Worship team can come on up. Is Jesus qualified to give us a world view? Colossians 1.16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. So a lot of people say God made the world. Yes, but specifically in the Trinity, all things were made through, say it out loud. Jesus. If you've never known that, there's a worldview change. Jesus made everything. He made the animals. Jesus made the trees. Jesus made the oceans. Jesus, everything was made through Jesus. Everything. So who has the right to tell us how to live in this particular world but the creator of the world? I made it. This is how you live it. Right? So good. All things, it says in verse uh, 3, were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. It keeps going in Colossians 1.17. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So is he qualified? Not only did he make it, but he's holding it all together somehow until the time of a new heaven and a new earth. He's very qualified to be the place of origin for all of our decisions, I think. <laughs> Now, what's interesting, in 18 he says, And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Everybody say preeminent. What a great word. I don't use that word very much. Do you? Like, like, like I've never said the Broncos are preeminent. I would like to think the Vikings are at times. Preeminent word means the greatest or surpassing all others. Preeminent. So here we have the creator of the world, we have the person that's holding the world together, and we have the person that's preeminent, greatest above, above all things. Is he qualified to teach us how to live this life? But it keeps getting better. And for in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace. By the blood of the cross. He made it. He's holding it together. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And through his sacrifice, he is invited and made a way of reconciliation for all of us. How could we not live the way he's teaching us to live? Now it's hard. And that's the journey a church does together. That's why life groups are important. That's why studying is important. That's why discipleship. You see, the, we are called to be disciples, not of Christianity. We are called to be disciples, not of Canyon View. We are called to be disciples, not of the Bible. We are called to be disciples, not of Pastor Kirk or Corey or anybody else. We are called to be disciples of Jesus. And I just got to tell you, <laughs> it's breathtaking. It's so good. So let's stand and sing as a family. And then I'll come back after the song and ask a question.
Come, Lord Jesus. Teach me how to listen. I want to know your voice. Show me how to wade through living in the natural and rise above the noise. Teach me how your heart beats. Tether it to mine. The surgery is worth it. Get below the surface. Open up my eyes. I want to see heaven. So let your kingdom come. I want to see heaven. So let your kingdom come. Faith can wake the dead man, and hope can split the sea, and help me to remember the kingdom of heaven is living in me. If death there was no match for the resurrected King. Then help me to remember that heaven is alive and it's living in.
love that verse. I, I'll probably get it wrong. It's uh, feel the walls are coming down. I feel the time has changed. I think the the hardship over the last couple of years we've had on this planet with the global pandemic is people are realized they put their eggs in the wrong basket, and so there's a there's a there's a there's, a, there's a, like a wave. There's like a move of people that are looking for an authentic truth that they can hold on to and base their life on. And we find that in Jesus and the beautiful Bible that tells us and teaches us about him and the way of following him and the beauty of Christianity. People are hungry. Your friends are hungry. Your family's hungry. Keep inviting them. Keep pointing them to Jesus. And, and some of you have been hungry, and you weren't quite sure why. Like, it just something was unsettled in your heart or mind. And maybe today, it's uh, this simple talk has helped you see that maybe your worldview kind of got hijacked a little bit by all sorts of stuff. It happens for all of us. And uh, Jesus is saying, I am the new and living way. I have a worldview that's beautiful. And I invite you into it. And so just, this isn't necessarily salvation. I'm just saying, is there anyone here that would be willing to confess that maybe, maybe my worldview got a little tainted over the years? And uh, I confess that. And uh, just go ahead and put your hand up as a symbol to God that, yeah, I can see that. And that the next question is maybe keep your keep your hand up. The next question is anybody else that says, you know, I really want Jesus' worldview. If that's you, then put your hand up. And if you already have one up, that means both are going up. And right there is the posture with the place to start to have a worldview of Christ. It's adoration and worship of Him. If you've never said it out loud before your hands in the air. Go ahead and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Jesus, give me your worldview. Help me know. Help me understand. Help us live. Help us live it out with love. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. You guys are delightful. Worship, our ministry team, could you come up and be available? Um, these folks are here to pray with you. We always love to pray with you. People come church with all sorts of needs and so they're here for you before you go if you'd like prayer for anything at all any healing any relationship stuff anything at all the lobby we got chairs and stuff on the on the plaza out there to sit and talk with people may the lord bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you and give you grace and much favor and all god's people said have a great day you guys love you